Good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, afternoon, depending on where you are. Guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nadja. If you are new here, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for stopping. And welcome back to those who have been here. I have a serious word for you guys today, okay? I need you guys to listen. I need you to listen intently on this word because this word is going to require action. It's going to require unity amongst the body of Christ. This is what God spoke to me on yesterday the 9th. And he spoke this to me about three o'clock in the afternoon. I had already studied my word that morning at six o'clock. And then I began to see 333 twice mid-afternoon i'm like okay lord i already studied so it must be something you want me to see those of you who are new here whenever god shows me 333 he is referencing jeremiah 333 that is him basically telling me come to me there is much i need to share with you that you do not know okay i sat down and i received this word and this is a rhema word a right now word because this is something that he is um asking us to partake in this saturday okay that's why i had to take the time to record this and put this up today on the 10th on thursday giving you enough time to prepare and go before the lord okay without further ado as i said i received this word on yesterday on october the 9th and he started me out by just stating that this word is about unity amongst the body of Christ and diversity. Recognizing that even that, no matter how diverse we are in our gifts, we are one body and we need to be on one accord for this particular um, situation that he's bringing forth that we need to acknowledge, okay? He started me out in Leviticus, Leviticus 23, 23. I would recommend that if you are able to follow along in scripture with me so that you can read as well. I will give you detailed information on where I got the information from, if I'm reading from the commentary, uh, if I'm reading for the notes of my Bible, of course, unless you have my Bible, you will not be able to, you know, follow along in that sense. But I want to provide this information so that it's something that you can willingly go back or follow along with me and you can get this information for yourself, okay? So in Leviticus 23, 23, starting at verse 25, it says, God said to Moses, tell the people of Israel on the day of the seventh month, set aside a day of rest, a sacred assembly, mark it with loud blasts on the ram's horn. Don't do any ordinary work, offer a fire gift to God. This is in my, the notes of my Bible. The blowing of the trumpets represented the preaching of the gospel by which men are called to repent of sin and to accept the salvation of Christ, which is signifying the day of atonement. OK. The day of atonement is on this Saturday, which is also Yom Kippur. OK. Yom Kippur means the day of atonement. I am going to read the Matthew Henry Concise Commentary in Bible Hub for that particular scripture. The blowing of trumpets represented the preaching of the gospel by which men are called to repent of sin and to accept the salvation of Christ, which was signified by the Day of Atonement. Also, it invited to rejoice in God and become strangers and pilgrims on earth, which was denoted by the Feast of Tabernacles observed in the same month. At the beginning of the year, they were called by this sound of trumpet to shake off spiritual drowsiness, to search and try their ways and to amend them. OK, the day of atonement was the ninth day after this. Thus, they were awakened to prepare for that day. You are being awakened to prepare for this day by sincere and serious repentance that it might indeed be to them a day of atonement, the humbling of our souls for sin and the making our peace with God is work that requires the whole man and the closest application of mind. On that day, God spake 
peace to his people and to his saints. Therefore, they must lay aside all their worldly business that they might be that they might the more clearly hear the voice of joy and gladness. So on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, God is calling for us as a body of Christ to be on one accord in unity and to fast and to pray on that day and to seek forgiveness, to seek repentance. First and foremost, we must think about everything that is taking place around us in the atmosphere for why this is a very serious thing and why God brought this to my attention when I spoke about Rosh Hashanah and God woke me up to reveal that this is the time period of the high holy days that our God is desiring for us to acknowledge and to celebrate, okay? We need to be referencing these days. Yom Kippur is considered one of the holiest days on the Jewish calendar. So imagine the power behind us being unified, praying, fasting, and repenting of our sins, which means to turn back to the Lord, okay? I want you to just envision the power behind God enlisting us to do this on one accord. Also, the number 23. God highlighted that when I saw that the scripture was Leviticus 23, 23. So I looked up the number 23 in the Hebrew Strong's Concordance and it meant father, my father has gathered. Isn't that powerful? My father has gathered. Our father is gathering us to be on one accord and unified for this day for these high holy days, okay? Joshua 24, I'm going to go to that and read it to you in the Bible app, in the message version. And it reads, verse 15, if you decide that it's a bad thing to worship God, then choose a God you'd rather serve and do it today. Choose one of the gods your ancestors worshiped from the country beyond the river or one of the gods of the Amorites on whose land you're now living. As for me and my family, we'll worship God. The people answered, we'd never forsake God, never. We'd never leave God to worship other gods, okay? This is a confession that God is asking for the body of Christ to make within our worship, within our praying and within our fasting on this day. I want to also read in the notes of my Bible for that particular scripture. And it says, God's faithfulness is a constant theme in Joshua. The question is, will his people respond faithfully in return? Joshua presented only two choices, serve the Lord God or serve foreign gods. They could not serve both. Such a challenge might seem more appropriate at the beginning of the book rather than at the end because at this stage the people had won the wars, obtained their land, and begun settling it. But Joshua understood that the challenge of choice, faithfulness and obedience, or unfaithfulness and disobedience, would be continually faced in the daily routines of life. He called the people to declare their loyalty and allegiance to God. This is what God is calling for, for you to declare your loyalty and your allegiance to God by repenting, worshiping, and praying and fasting on one of the most holiest days on the Jewish calendar. You have two days, okay? What he revealed to me was when the whole body comes together in the spirit, it makes warring more powerful as a body, okay? The army is strengthened and grows when we are on one accord. Next in Nehemiah 8, it's verse one, it says in the message version, by the time the seventh month arrived, keep in, mi keep in mind the seventh month in scripture is the month that we're in right now, which is October. By the time the seventh month arrived, 
the people of Israel were settled in their towns. Then all the people gathered as one person in the town square in front of the water gate and asked the scholar Ezra to bring the book of the revelation of Moses that God had commanded for Israel. So Ezra, the priest, brought the revelation to the congregation, which was made up of both men and women, everyone capable of understanding. It was the first day of the seventh month. He read it facing the town square at the water gate from early dawn until noon in the, in the hearing of the men and women, all who could understand it, and all the people listened. They were all ears to the book of the Revelation. The scholar Ezra stood on a wooden platform constructed for the, for the occasion. He was flanked on the right by Matithia, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and M Messiah, and on the left by Padiah, Mishael, Barkija, Hashum, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Melshalom. Ezra opened the book. Every eye was on him. He was standing on the raised platform, and as he opened the book, everyone stood. Then Ezra praised God, the great God, and all the people responded, Oh, yes, yes, with hands raised high. And then they fell to their knees in worship of God, their faces to the ground. A portion of this that I'm reading came from the commentary. Masters of families should bring their families with them to public worship of God. Women and children have souls to save and are therefore to acquaint themselves with the word of God. Little ones, as they come to reason, must be trained up in religion. Okay, as you saw, it also, as I mentioned, discussed the seventh month, which is the high holy days, which is a part of Yom Kippur. So it's not just about repentance, but it is also about hearing the gospel. God's reflection, the image of God, his reflection is in us. This is a section that is in my Bible that talks about his reflection in us. How are we like God? We are capable of communicating and doing so. We can bless or curse. We are creative and creativity gives us joy and satisfaction. We experience emotions and feelings. We long for relationship and fellowship. We discern between right and wrong. We act and are responsible for our actions. We long to pursue him. Mary sat at Jesus' feet listening to him. Jesus let her know that sitting at his feet was important. Okay, so God just wanted me to share that with you guys. Now, next he showed me thanksgiving for deliverance from death, which is in 116, Psalm 116, starting at verse 1. I love God because he listened to me, listened as I begged for mercy. He listened so intently. As I laid out my case before him, death stared me in the face. Hell was hard on my heels. Up against it, I didn't know which way to turn. Then I called out to God for help. Please God, I cried out, save my life. God is gracious. It is he who makes things right. Our most compassionate God. God takes the side of the helpless. When I was at the end of my rope, he saved me. Now, how many of you can say that? Most all of us can say that when we were at the end of our rope, he always was there and saved us. We need to bring ourselves back to that memorization rather than thinking about where we are right now, what is not quite right, okay? Always take yourself back to remembering what God did in the past so you stay in the right heart posture to remain in a place of reverence okay this next scripture was pretty profound and it is in isaiah isaiah chapter 4 starting at verse 2 and it's talking about god's branch okay i'm reading this from the message version and that's when god's branch will sprout green and lush the produce of the country will give Israel's survivors something to be proud again. Oh, they'll hold their heads high. Everyone left behind in Zion, 
all the discards and, re and rejects in Jerusalem will be reclassified as holy, alive, and therefore precious. God will give Zion's women a good bath. He'll scrub the bloodstained city of its violence and brutality, purge the place with the firestorm of judgment. Then God will bring back the ancient pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night and mark Mount Zion and everyone in it with his glorious presence, his immense protection, protective presence, shade from the burning sun and shelter from the driving rain. What it says in the notes of my Bible, Isaiah painted a picture of hope on the backdrop of a situation of gloom and despair. And that day points toward a time beyond the coming judgment, which is branch. Branch may refer to the Messiah or to the righteous remnant who survived the judgment. It may also indicate new growth or the fertility of the land and thus parallel the phrase, the fruit of the earth. This holy remnant would experience not only God's forgiveness, okay, but also his care and protection. The cloud by day and the fire by night are reminders of how the Lord guided and protected his people as they journeyed through the wilderness. Genuine security does not depend on national leaders, but, it, but is God's gift of his presence to his people. My God, that presence, oh, that passage right there was so powerful by itself. So many nuggets in this. Number one, for the reason why my channel is called The Cloud and the Fire was exactly what this says. The cloud by day and the fire by night are reminders of how the Lord guided and protected his people as they journeyed through the wilderness. This is the reason why my ministry is like it is. Why I am called to go through certain wildernesses and then share it with the people because that is what God has called for me within my purpose is to lead the people through the wilderness. But more importantly, the purpose of this fast and celebrating this day is exactly what he mentioned. Because we are in a space of judgment. There is a lot of judgment that is taking place right now. The fact that it says it may also indicate new growth or the fertility of the land and thus parallel the phrase, the fruit of the earth, this holy remnant. You all are a holy remnant. And you would experience not only God's forgiveness, as we said, celebrating this day is a day of seeking forgiveness, repenting of our sins. So not only would you receive God's forgiveness, but also his care and his protection in the midst of this judgment. This is why celebrating this is so important. This is why honoring this is so powerful. And then for it to say at the end that genuine security does not depend on national leaders. So while we are making decisions on who we are voting for in office, your genuine security does not depend on who's in office. Your genuine security, as it says, is God's gift of his presence to his people. Your genuine security is coming through your obedience in receiving covering from the Lord through your um, forgiveness, asking for forgiveness, fasting and praying and repenting of your sins. That is where your security is coming from. This is why. My God, the power behind fasting, praying, and seeking forgiveness on a high holy day in the midst of October when the atmosphere is so wicked because of the witches and people following a false gods doing all their rituals during this month. Can you imagine the power that will take place in the spirit with all of the believers on one accord? fasting, praying, and repenting of their sins in the middle of October. Just, just think about that for one minute. The power behind that. The next scripture he gave me was Jeremiah 5, 
sins are piled sky high and this is in the message version patrol jerusalem streets look around take note search the market squares see if you can find one man one woman a single soul who does what is right and tries to live a true life i want to forgive that person god's decree but if all they do is say as sure as god lives they're not they're nothing but a bunch of liars but you god you have an eye for truth don't you you hit them hard but it didn't phase them you disciplined them but they refused correction hard-headed harder than rock they wouldn't change then i said to myself well these are just poor people they don't know any better they were never taught anything about god they never went to prayer meetings i'll find some people from the best families i'll talk to them they'll know what's going on the way god works they'll know the score but they were no better rebels all off doing their own thing the invaders are ready to pounce and kill like a mountain lion a wilderness wolf panthers on the prowl the streets aren't safe anymore and why because the people's sins are piled sky high their betrayals are past counting why should i even bother with you any longer your children wander off leaving me taking up with gods that aren't even gods i satisfied this deepest needs and then they went off with the sacred whores left me for orgies in sex shrines my god a bunch of well-groomed lusty stallions each one pawning and snorting for his neighbor's wife do you think i'm going to stand around and do nothing god's decree don't you think i'll take serious measures against a people like this let me tell you god is not playing he is not playing a lot of the demonic things that are taking place are happening because god is allowing it because of the judgment that is coming forth i it was just brought back to my attention the prophetic dream that God gave me four years ago in 2020. I posted it in my community and uh, tab and I will also post it in the description of this video where God gave me a prophetic dream about a wave coming as in the days of Noah. And even back then I was very new to my walk with being restored to the Lord and my understanding of how God spoke to me. But even then, when I went back and looked at it, I was pleasantly surprised to see that the word was the same as today. And it referenced what is happening right now with these hurricanes and these 10 to 12 feet high water levels surrounding homes which was in my dream and that it was judgment from the Lord because of people serving other gods. It all now makes sense that the word he gave me four years ago is what's taking place right now. So see, God gives warning. He warns his people. He gives them time to repent. He gives them time to get it right before the judgment comes. He doesn't just jump and judge and his wrath come upon people without warning most things that you see take place the end result is the end result of being disobedient and rejecting the warning from god that's what we have to remember even the people that you see that are being outed in certain situations you can best believe there were multiple opportunities for them for them to accept redemption for them to accept turning and repenting there are multiple warnings before the judgment but when you reject God's warnings the wrath will come and it may not come immediately but it always comes okay okay so Ezekiel 11 verse 14 starting at verse 14 is God will restore Israel okay this is God's desire the purpose of why some judgment must take place is so that he can restore Israel. It is to persuade 
his believers to turn away from their sin, be restored unto him. And sometimes the judgment has to come in order for some people to be in a position where they are recognized, where they recognize that God is not playing with them. God is not playing with us. Okay. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, then you know that we could be taken out of here at any given moment. We're not guaranteed another day on this planet, right? So when we start seeing the spiritual things that are taking place and um, people's lives being lost at the blink of an eye, and we know we look warm, we know we're not right, it becomes a wake-up call that if I don't get it right now and something happens to me tomorrow, there's no turning back and saying, Lord, I'm sorry, can you please bring me back so I can repent? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this is a situation where it's like, I need to get right now. And sometimes people have to be made an example because the wages of sin is death. And when you don't take the precious grace that God gives you and you take it for granted, that grace runs out. Okay, I'm going to read the Matthew Henry concise commentary in Bible Hub for Ezekiel 11, 14. The pious captives in Babylon were insulted by the Jews who continued in Jerusalem, but God made gracious promise to them. It is promised that God will give them one heart, a heart firmly fixed for God and not wavering. All who are made holy have a new spirit, a new temper and disposition. They act from new principles, walk by new rules, and aim at new ends. A new name or a new face will not serve without a new spirit. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The carnal heart, like a stone, cannot be made to feel. Men live among the dead and dying and are neither concerned nor humbled. He will make their hearts tender and fit to receive impressions. This is God's work. It is his gift by promise and a wonderful and happy change it is wrought by it, from death to life. Their practices shall be agreeable to those principles. These two must and will go together. When the sinner feels his need of these blessings, let him present the promises as prayers in the name of Christ. They will be performed. Zephaniah 2, a call to repentance. So get yourselves together, shape up. You're a nation without a clue about what it wants. Do it before you're blown away like leaves in a windstorm. Before God's judgment, anger sweeps down on you. Before God's judgment day, wrath descends with full force. Seek God, all you quietly discipled people who live by God's justice. Seek God's right ways. Seek a quiet and disciplined life. Perhaps you'll be hidden on the day of God's anger. See, this is the importance of us coming together on one accord on Yom Kippur to repent of our sins. As it says, perhaps you'll be hidden on the day of God's anger. Okay, that is the point. We need to be hidden in the times where all of this stuff is beginning to take place. Now, uh, he showed me Luke chapter 5 verse 12 where it talks about Jesus healing or cleansing a leper. I felt this in my spirit, okay, that even in the mist, I want you to imagine this. We know that through prayer and fasting, that much deliverance and healing takes place. I feel like there's going to be a massive level of healing that is going to take place amongst the body of Christ. If you imagine all of us on one accord, clearly we know everybody isn't. But the point is for this message to get out. So please, I am begging you to share this message amongst the believers that you know. For all of us to be on one accord on this day, the level of healing and cleansing that will take place amongst the body is a part of us being restored, as I read in the previous uh, scripture in Ezekiel. Okay? Yes, about God restoring Israel. A part of being restored is also deliverance, healing. So the level of cleansing and healing that will take place within our bodies, 
physically as well as spiritually will be on another level okay Romans 15 is discussing bearing others burdens this is the mindset that the Lord is wanting for the body of Christ to have those of us who are strong and able in the faith need to step in and lend a hand to those who falter and not just do what is most convenient for us strength is for service not status let me say that again strength is for service not status this is the message version by the way each one of us needs to look after the good of the people around us asking ourselves how can i help this exactly what Jesus did. That's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles, but waded right in and helped out. I took on the troubles of the troubled is the way scripture puts it. Even if it was written in scripture long ago, you can be sure it's written for us. God wants the combination of his steady, constant calling and warm personal counsel in scripture to come to characterize us. Keep us alert for whatever he will do next. Make our, make our dependably steady and warmly personal God develop maturity in you so that you get along with each other as well as Jesus gets along with us all. Then we'll be a choir, okay? Not our voices only, but our very lives sing in harmony in a stunning anthem to the God of, and Father of our Master Jesus. So reach out and welcome one another to God's glory. Jesus did it. Now you do it. Jesus, staying true to God's purposes, reached out in a special way to the Jewish insiders so that the old ancestral promises would come true for them. As a result, the non-Jewish outsiders have been able to experience mercy and to show appreciation to God. Just think of all the scriptures that will come true in what we do. Next scripture is 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians okay? It's all scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 27, I'm sorry, verse 23 through 27 in the message version. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he'll do it. Friends, keep up your prayers for us. Greet all the followers of Jesus there with a holy embrace. And make sure this letter gets read to all the brothers and sisters. Don't leave anyone out. The amazing grace of Jesus Christ will be with you. Okay, so as you can see, it is consistent throughout this word with what God started me with, which was unity. Okay, unity, although diversity for all of us to be on one accord is how restoration is going to take place. God is asking for obedience in doing his will. The purpose of this word is for you to operate in obedience and do God's will. There is a passage in my Bible labeled hospitality, the gift of welcome. Hospitality is the practice of welcoming, sheltering, and feeding with no thought of personal gain. Those who come to your door, much more than elegant menace, elaborate table settings, or lavish entertainment. Hospitality is sharing what we have and who we are with whomever God sends. Hospitality includes setting aside time for fellowship and being flexible in order to accommodate impro impromptu gatherings. You know, it also says that for the people of the Bible, hospitality was not merely a matter of good manners, but a necessity in the harsh desert regions. Hospitality was openly rewarded as when Rahab was given protection at Jericho's fall for having extended hospitality to Joshua's spies. A lack of hospitality was punished as when Nabal died after refusing to offer hospitality to David's men. God is clearly seeking for us not only to be in unity and on one accord, but to make sure that we are looking out for each other. Okay? I think that because of a lot of the things that are beginning to happen, the level of judgment, 
we're going to need to uphold each other. We're going to need to encourage each other and actually physically offer that level of hospitality and help one another. It is something that I think is def definitely going to be um, required of us, okay? It's not going to be any more of that mindset that um, everything is for ourselves and for our own families. But your brothers and your sisters in Christ are your family, okay? And you will be able to tell which ones are your true family. You will be able to know them by their fruit. You hear me? The Lord will give you the discernment necessary to recognize the difference. That's the importance of us staying in alignment with the Lord, being obedient to his will, remaining at his feet, repenting of our sins so that he can guide and lead us through the discernment and understanding of what is of him in this time. The very last scripture that I received was 1st John. Oh, I'm sorry, 2nd John 1 verse 4. Okay, I'm going to read verse 4 through 6 in the message version. I can't tell you how happy I am to learn that many believers of your congregation are diligent in living out the truth. Exactly as commanded by the Father. But permit me a reminder, friends. And this is not a new commandment by simply a repetition of our original and basic charter. That we love each other. Love means following his commandments and his unifying commandment is that you conduct your lives in love this is the first thing you heard and nothing has changed this word when i tell you is not a word that you shall hear and not act this is not a word that you shall hear and not go before the lord this is not a word that you shall hear and not participate in what god has commanded us to do on October the 12th, with it, which is Yom Kippur. Everything that I read is the importance of us doing exactly what he said to do. Listen to the word, hear the gospel, not just with us, but with our families. Masters of the house, you are responsible for letting the little ones, as well as your spouse, hear the gospel. Okay? Pray. Fast for that day, whether you fast from sundown on Friday night, okay, as the sun goes down from like seven o'clock to sundown on Saturday, because Yom Kippur is Saturday. So if you fast from 7 p.m. On, on Friday and not eat anything until 7 p.m. the next day, allow that time to be you laying on your face before the Lord, repenting, worshiping, praying, seeking answers, guidance, and just being grateful. Gratitude, I cannot tell you. I'm going to do a video, a separate video, to just reveal to you what I learned from my last fast. I just got off of a seven-day fast from the 1st of October to the 7th of October. And the revelation did not come to me until the last day. But I am sure that there are many of you who are also operating this way. And we must, must make sure that we're operating in gratitude, regardless of what we see. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with this because I, I know that this is long. But for who it's for, it is for. For those who actually care about the most important. devil you see how the devil works a commercial comes on with that demonic foolishness in the background while I'm talking about this see how the devil works distractions after distraction after distraction but we're not gonna allow that we are not going to allow that foolishness I rebuke you Satan in the name of Jesus this is why this is so important okay there was influence after influence everywhere you turn, trying to not only distract you, but your children, your spouse. If we're not on one accord with the Lord, there's going to be a lot that's going to come 
that is going to cause us to focus more on what's happening around us rather than being in faith and knowing what God has revealed. Okay? That is why this is so important. That is why this is so important. I am going to persuade my children, okay, to also fast, even if they don't fast as long as I do. A portion of their time needs to be fasting and repenting on that day. I have twins that are in college. I have a 21 year old that's about to be 22 that is um, definitely old enough to fast and I have an 11 year old and she can fast at least for till noon right and be repenting and laying on her face before the Lord this is important okay I'm gonna end here share this video with everyone that you know if you care about us all being on one accord, share this video. Reveal to them, because I know that there are a lot of people in the body of Christ that have no knowledge whatsoever of the high holy days, which I did not. Even going to church because the pastors don't talk about the high holy days. But yet we're quick to celebrate Easter and have a Christmas tree sitting in our church. But the important days that God wanted us to reference and to celebrate you don't hear anything about i know for a fact that this is what god is wanting us to refer to because he intently woke me up at 2 a.m in the morning to reveal to me about rosh hashanah all i all i can say is don't take it lightly do not take this lightly all right I love you guys. I'll see you in my next video. God bless.